Facebook live stream now. Joining us, uh, find your seat. We're going to start the show in just a few minutes. You guys are all getting ready, right? Doing lines and stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah you bet. Not doing lines, going over lines, going. Yeah, over yeah, yeah. Lines. No, no, no. I, That's what I'm doing. Almost ready. <laughs> no, this little tablet has my script on it. Don't worry about it. Huh? Okay. Cool. Well, for getting everybody else like at home, uh, get some popcorn and have a drink. Now we're going to start the show in just a few minutes. <clears throat> Hi, Dave. Uh, Jimmy on the Zoom webinar already. That's great. Yeah. What? We have a lot of people on the Zoom right now. We're still trying to go live on Facebook. It's just gonna be a minute. Yeah. Hey Jimmy. Hey Brad. Uh, I I'm um rewriting a script here. Um, and I'm definitely not playing a game. How did you beat the boss of world three? Oh, you have to uh, at the beginning of the level you have to go backwards first. And it gets okay, switched to you. the end. I'm gonna use that to punch up a script. Whatever. Yeah. Right, that was my script, favorite right? line. What? What, Keith? You're going over scripts. Oh, for the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm getting ready for that. I'm okay. doing that now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was getting the uh, scripts printed. Uh, oh, like with a printer? Couple more minutes, folks. Settle down. We're pretty settled down. Settle in. Settle in. That's what I meant to say. Hey, did you guys put pants on? What? Oh, is that a requirement? I changed pairs of sweatpants. Does that count? Ah, sure. Wait, I'm not going to start wearing pants I'm now. Later, so I did. Uh, you're a what? I had to stand up. I have to stand up later, so I'm wearing pants. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I have to stand up too, Cal, but I didn't really think about that, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. My neighbors, though. I'm just getting set up on Facebook, and then we'll be ready to go, everybody. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm rehearsing. Look at this. Um, it's running, lines. apparently. We have word that Facebook is running. Can I see you? Is it? Are you in your house? <laughs> Maybe. We're just getting our technical stuff in order, you guys. Nice. Uh, um, about the technical stuff. Yep. Henry has a yeah, I'm watching it on Facebook right now. You shouldn't be watching a show you're in. Just the same. How would we know it was happening if we didn't watch it? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go comment about what a good job I'm doing. Give me a shout out. <laughs> okay, I will. Ladies and gentlemen, we really are going to do some legit content. It's just not, it's not just going to be this for an hour, I swear. All right. I think we're ready for our legit content. We're ready for it? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, then here we go. Everybody now, close, your, uh, close your videos. If you are at home, bring your house lights down. Hello. 
Welcome to the Empire Review Home Edition. Everybody, please welcome our homebound sparkling beatniks, Ayla Alquist, Brian Elliott, me, Jimmy Sorrell, Pete Sales, Kelly Sai, Rachel Winslow, Tina Wollstonecroft, Stuart Wilson. We also have two special guest beatniks tonight, Ms. Uh, Ginny Dunleavy and Russell Kellogg. Of course, all the love goes to our stage manager who has turned into a broadcast administrator, Nikki Mariani Wilson. We have special guests tonight, uh, Dave Rabinow and Chris Monty. And now, here's your host, Keith Munslow. Are you everybody nice to see you thank you for coming to the empire of you home edition where we will be broadcasting from multiple homes to bring you the comedy content that you depend on every first sunday of the month now of course earlier in the month uh we had started out rehearsing for what was to be the fun and games show and uh we only got uh one rehearsal in before uh, shit got real. And so here we are now doing this show. So you will see some stuff that we wrote and reworked uh, for this format from the Fun and Games show. If you notice a overtone of game theme in the comedy, that is why. Um, but like I said, we have retrofitted them for tonight's performance. Um, and so uh, without further ado, I would like to just chime in and say hello uh, and have you all say hello to the Sparkling Beatnik. So everybody, if you guys would just pop on and say hi to uh, everybody at home. Hi. Hello. This is the internet. Thanks for being here. here. Nice to see you guys. Oh, Stu. Uh, Stu, uh, guys, uh, I'm going to do what I can with the kids here. Um, is that going to be OK for the stuff that you have to do tonight? Yo, uh, no. It isn't going to be OK, or it is? I mean, not, I mean it's not going to be great, but we'll see. OK. All right. Um, Say hi, Henry. Hi. Okay. Hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. Stu, you got this, right? Uh, okay. He's fine. He'll be fine, Keith. It's, it's fine. All right. That'll work. Um, well, we're going to start. We're going to start right now, and we're going to start with the news. And now, the news at 7, live from multiple homes. Welcome to Local News 7. I'm Brian Elliott. There I am. Our top story tonight, everything is still bad and scary. In further news, all the things that were bad and scary yesterday are worse and scarier today. And... In an unlikely turn of events, uh, we have a story about a friendship between a dog and a panda. A fun thing to think about as we all cower in fear. But first, let's check the traffic with Jenny Dunleavy. Jenny. Hey, Brian. As you can see, this cul-de-sac uh, is usually just a really um, a uh, bustling cul-de-sac, but it's had limited activity today. Although we did see a robot-driven car. Yes, Brian, a robot-driven car. There was a dog in it. We think it may have been a shit zoodle. We're not sure, Brian. We're looking to confirm that fact. It did have New York plates. That's right. We can't keep an eye. We can't keep them out, but I'm going to keep my eye on this story. Brian, back to you. Thanks for that, Ginny. Uh, you gave me a good chance to put on the blazer that I forgot to put on because I did not wear pants to this broadcast. When times like these, it's important to heed the words of scientific experts. Unfortunately, the best we could do is Local 7's resident science reporter, Stuart Wilson. Thanks for joining us, Stu. Hello. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. This is my assistant, uh, other, other scientist. Okay. This is so, normal. Uh, yeah, big news in the science world this week as the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistries, uh, con uh, Commission on Isotopic Abundances and Atomic Waste, you might know them as UPAC-KIA, has uh, revised 
the atomic weight of hafnium, okay? So everyone should start using 178.49 plus or minus two one hundredths. Uh, now hafnium, you probably know it by its uh, uh, atomic symbol uh, or uh, its atomic weight, 72. Now, if you've been using 178.49 plus or minus two one hundredths, stop. It upsets him too, okay? So you need to use 178.48. Hold on a second. Stu, in light of everything else, none of this uh, point seems four like eight new. seven uh, six. All right? Stu, this it's doesn't seem news. like big news. It's big news. It's big, 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 big news. Okay, well, uh, uh, people... You know, because everyone needs to buy a new periodic table, whether it's for your home, your classroom, your laboratory, an uh, infographic <laughs> accent wall. Okay, Stuart, couldn't people just fix that with a Sharpie? Do you need to be doing this right now? I... Yeah, it's important, okay? You can't just do it with a Sharpie, all right? Now, uh, the Council of Hafnium Using Scientists, or CHUS, has already updated their uh, computational chemistry exper experiment matrix algorithms, or CACAMA acts, to reflect the change. Now, the French Chemie de Society... Okay, Stuart, clearly Royale. you need to be attending to that, baby. I'll just cut to the chase. Does this have anything to do with a coronavirus vaccine? Uh, a what vaccine? Okay, thanks for your time, Stuart. It's always great to have information. Yeah, yeah. Maybe at, some point, maybe at some point, information will actually turn into comfort. When you turn to Local 7 News, you want hard-hitting journalism you can't find anywhere else. That's why we're turning to investigative reporter Russell Kellogg for our latest exclusive. Good evening, Brian, and good evening, Rhode Island. Now, all of our lives have been terribly disrupted by these world events, but even though there's been a big change in our daily existence, some things have gone along, unfortunately, like normal. I'm talking, of course, about crime. There has been a crime wave local right to where I am now, and I'm about to get to the bottom of it. Let me just get the camera activated. Now, I, I saved six chocolate chip cookies. Six in a bag right behind here next to the potatoes. I remember where they were, but they're gone. And look, I investigated and I found them here, here, crumbs crumbs in the freezer. Absolutely devastated. And of course, when you want a chocolate chip cookie, you want a nice, cool glass of water. So you put your Brita pitcher and nothing, empty. I did a little more digging around and I think I may have gotten to the bottom of who's responsible for this crime wave locally. His name is Declan Kellogg. Now, we've tried to get to his entryway here and his spokesmom has told us that it is his bedtime, supposedly, likely story. And of course, the worst of all possible crimes, it was April Fool's last week, right? Take a look. Absolutely devastating. I'm so sorry to have to report to everyone of Rhode Island that crime continues unabated even in this new era. Russell Kellogg, investigative reporter. Uh, uh, thanks for that, Russell. Uh, great report as always, uh, I assume. Uh, to be honest, I was in the janitor's closet stealing this toilet paper. Uh, um, let's check in with the forecast with our meteorologist, uh, Kate Sales. How's the weather out there, Kate? Uh, thank you, Brian. The weather in my house is damp, but there hasn't been rain in days. I mean, there haven't been showers in days. No showers in here. There is a slight fog coming from the living room. Oh wait, that's just Todd and his BO. We still have deodorant, Todd. God, if it's the one thing we still have, it's the deodorant. And, the, and you don't have to just keep eating the chili. It's not the only thing. Todd, Todd, do you hear me? Anyways, back to you, Brian. That report very briefly distracted me from obsessing over my own mortality. Great stuff, Kate. Let's catch back up with traffic. How is it out there, Ginny? Uh, reporter Ginny out in the field. Are you coming in? 
I cannot hear your voice, Jenny. So if you need to uh, spin the rotors on that weather copter a little slower. I hey, Brian, can you, Brian, can you hear me there now? There you are. Come on in. Give us that traffic report. Brian, so sorry. I had rushed down to Pleasant Street to That's see okay. the action. Sure there's a lot of traffic that made it worth all that buildup. Oh, yeah, Brian, let me just tell you, we've had a lot of traffic. Of course, most of it, Brian, has been of the two-wheel variety. Uh, unfortunately, we've seen a bunch of bicycles and some people not even wearing helmets. We also saw a scooter. I thought they were going to outlaw those things. Those handlebars are a virus waiting for half. And where's Ramona when you need her? Well, Brian, I thought I saw a car, but it was my Aunt Mary. She was, uh, was in a um, golf cart and taking her cat for a ride. Uh, we did have some four-wheel activity, and uh, let me tell you, it was one of the best ollies I've ever seen. That's a skateboard trick that I'll be following up on in my next report. Sorry about the muting. Uh, talk to you soon, Brian. Thank you, Jenny. Really starting to doubt how, quote-unquote, essential our jobs are. Let's keep things moving with an update from Jimmy Sorrell over in the Sports Dome. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, any sport nowadays can be done from the comfort of your own homes. 32-year-old Elisha Nachomovitz, or should I say Nachomovitz, ran over 3,000 laps on his 23-foot balcony, completing a total distance of a 26.2 marathon. This has been inspiring many to create their own at-home events. Like if you're missing NASCAR, for example, you can just change the tires on your car while going, doo, 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 doo. Uh, do you like soccer and you're missing it? Well, maybe when you pass your, your roommates, you could fall to the ground and clutch your knee in agony and try to get somebody to whistle. Uh, maybe if you're missing baseball, why don't you try spying on your neighbors and just stealing some signs? I mean, nowadays with these home sports, everyone has the home field advantage. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Jimmy. Well, from the wild world of sports to the wild world of Hollywood, Rachel Winslow has all your entertainment news. Rachel? And Hi, there you are. There we there go. Are. We got it. How we doing? Oh, my goodness. So, hey there, all you cool cats and kittens. Uh, I'm just thinking that up while I was muted. I was so excited. No, that's a catchphrase. You know it from the Netflix phenomenon, Tiger King. That's the show we all watched because it featured the only people in America whose lives were already a bizarre, death-defying hellscape. Now, it's a difficult time for the folks in La La Land with anticipated films like A Quiet Place 2 and Fast and the Furious 9 and the movie of Hamilton Guy's other play, all being uh, pushed out into releases as far as next year or who the hell knows. And while there's a literally unknowable trove of streaming content available, I've been addicted to a riveting program called My Own Thoughts. That's right, I didn't knowingly subscribe and there doesn't seem to be a way to opt out to every mistake, humiliation, heartbreak and failure, no matter how small, playing over and over in my head every moment of every day. Is it happening right now as you give this report, you ask? You bet, Brian, you bet. Is this report itself being added to the file this very moment? Obviously. Back to you in the studio. Wow, not a very good report, Rachel. I would normally feel uncomfortable saying that to your face, but you are working from home and it has created a disconnect. Well, it's a great time to pick up a new hobby. Maybe cooking? Sure, that's as good as anything else. Local 7's culinary expert, Kelly Sai has some recipes you can try at home. How's it going, Kelly? Uh, I'm not ready. I'm still disinfecting the groceries. Can you come back? Uh, yeah, sure, I guess so. This whole thing is just kind of whatever at this point. A lot of folks have been looking to spruce up their living space. Local 7's home and garden expert, Tina Wollstonecroft, has some fun things you can try at home. Tina? Hi there, folks. Thanks, Brian. Well, I've been fortunate enough to have a lot more quality time to spend with some new friends. Don't worry, I've been staying inside. they are plants! Oh, gosh. You know, I never knew how good of a friend a houseplant could be until I got to know my jade, Sheila. 
First of all, Sheila is such a good and patient listener. Second, they never roll their eyes when I remind them that my favorite scene in 13 going on 30 is coming up. And third, they have stood by my side through some really low points through this quarantine. Honestly, I didn't think this type of bond could have ever happened after the blowout I had with Sherry, my Parodia cactus. Sherry and I were super close for about five months, but one day we're drinking coffee, watching the chickadees and finches at the bird feeder. And the next day when I bring home a few more succulents, they barely acknowledge me. Grass is always greener, I guess. I mean, I get along fine with Margot. She's my snake plant, but it's just so hard to hold any kind of conversation with her. She just stares at the reflection in her window. So I kind of learned she's only good for shallow, small talk, which is fine with me. Anyway, Sheila, she just gets me. The other day they recited this funny little proverb that is so us. Excuse me, Margot. <laughs> anyway, Sheila, tell them what it is. <laughs> See, isn't that so perfect? Wow, this whole thing was a bad idea. Speaking of bad ideas, let's check in and see if Cooking with Kelly's ready for us yet. Kelly? Uh, I, I have to soak the produce now. Just, it needs like 40 seconds. Can you just come back? I cannot imagine this segment to be worth that wait. Well, let's keep things upbeat with a look at the lighter side with human interest reporter Ayla Alquist. To answer your question, Brian, yes, I would be very interested. I'm sorry, Ayla? Humans? What? I would be very interested in seeing other humans. I've been in my house for um, uh, 437 hours, and I've only seen my cats, a centipede, and something that I thought was a mouse, but it turned out to be this, like, huge ball of dust. It's crazy. <laughs> a, a ball of... <gasps> That reminds me, I overheard my neighbor Darcy screaming at her husband Dan the other night. Here's the scoop. He drank all the non-fat milk and she doesn't like to put hole in her mini beets because at that point, it's basically, and I quote, ice cream. So they're going to get divorced. I tried to intervene by blasting, it's all coming back to me now by Canadian singer Celine Dion, but the pair had no comment. Um, I am going to try singing it live when they take the garbage out on Wednesday night. That sounds like okay no you know what you got me i'm lonely i'm so lonely this song is actually about paul fine do i wish he was here yeah sure but he's with brianna now so i'm i'm fine though seriously i'm fine i don't need anybody to keep me company because i'm fine <laughs> i've finished crying and he hits the bachelor and I can't remember when or where or how. And I finished that memory you and I had ever <laughs> Um, so fun, Ayla. Let's check back in with Kelly's cooking report because her constant failure makes me feel better about my life. Okay, I just went ahead and, and just threw out all of the groceries outside for now because they're safer and uh God, this is just so much um i was gonna make salmon but you know what we're gonna do we're gonna make a pantry snack so um not sure what you have in your pantry at the moment but that that food is nice and clean and um it's gonna be great so what you're gonna wanna do is, I think I have a bag down here. Just uh, grab a bag and uh, just go right into your pantry and see what you have. Let's see, uh, I have some breadcrumbs here. Just a roll of that. Uh, this uh, semolina flour, you could use all purpose flour if you wanted, but uh, don't put too much, you don't want it to be too floury. Uh, let's see, uh, these are sunflower seeds from nice little nutty crunch and uh, popcorn, I'm not gonna put popcorn in there. Uh, 
Oh, some apricots, any dried fruit you have, just throw that right in for a little chewiness and sweetness and um, spices, you know, put in as much as you want for as spicy as you want it. Anything you got will be just fine. And uh, what's this? Yeah, uh, a little moisture. You're gonna just spray that with some Pam so it doesn't stick and uh, get that all shaken up. And you have pantry fun snack. Hmm, so good. Sounds great, Kelly, but I think I'll stick to my regular meal. Two and a half microwavable Hungry Man dinners a day because I don't ever know what time it is. Well, great reporting really does come in threes. What the hell? Let's catch back up with Jenny on traffic. Hey, Brian. Uh, as you can see, I went to Route 1A. We're talking the metropolis of Route 44, Pawtucket Ave. Uh, that is East Providence thoroughfare. And you know what, Brian? Not a whole heck of a lot going on one way or the other. You know, Brian, I've always wanted to be a traffic reporter, getting people, helping them get from point A to point B, making sure they get to work on time, get to that wedding, that important appointment. People text me. They write me letters. They email me tell me that I have helped them. Uh, I've, I've been able to help them get from point A to point B, but right now there's no problem getting from point A to point B and really no, tr wait a minute, Brian. I think I see, I think I see an Amazon truck. I'm going to follow up on that, Brian, and get back to you. No traffic, but things are happening. Well, that's all for today's broadcast. From Local News 7, I'm Brian Elliott, reminding you that it would not kill you to put on a pair of pants, you know? We'll see you tomorrow, I guess. Well, that's it for the news. Right now, we have a video for you, and it goes like this. If you see someone coming, there's no need to be unkind. Raise your hand, give a shout, and move your arms out and take a step to the side. Social distance, social distance, everybody keep your cool. Social distance, social distance, don't hug your friend like a fool. Thanks for that video, Ayla. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, the Sparkling Beatniks would like to present the couple's counseling sketch. All right, Mary, Tess, I know it's strange for all of us to be doing couples therapy sessions this way under these circumstances, but we're all just going to have to do the best that we can. Now, Obviously, you two are no longer quarantined in the same space, so I assume we've had some sort of a setback. Who wants to tell me what happened? I'll tell you what happened. She's a cheater. That's what happened. Oh, for Christ's sakes, Mary, I'm not a cheater. Doctor, she's being super dramatic. Okay, that's a, that's a big accusation. Do you have any proof, Mary? 
No, she doesn't have any proof. She stormed out of the house after the governor told everyone to knock it off. And now she's staying in her mother's basement. That's not an essential drama queen, okay? All right, Tess, let me, let me hear what Mary has to say, please. Proof. Yeah, I got, I got proof. I got a lot of proof. What about infidelity? What about extramarital? What about perfidiousness? Uh, perfidiousness, her, that too. Perfidiousness? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even know what that means. Exactly my point. What's your point? You're throwing around a bunch of big words and it doesn't prove anything. It proves you're a cheater. That's what it proves. And my mother told me I don't need to hang out with no cheetah. Uh, here we go again with your mother now. She always has to bring her mother into it, Doc. All right, all right, you two, let's take this down a notch. Okay, let's now, Mary, to be fair, you haven't produced any real proof that Tess is cheating. And we've talked about making false accusations before. You know it's not healthy. I'll tell you what's not healthy. She's up all hours of the night in her phone, scrolling, doing these things, then hides it from me. And then she's on her iPad. When I look over at dinner, she's laughing and snickering. I know something's going on. That doesn't prove anything. If I try to talk about it, she just says, I'm jealous. Uh, yeah, because you are being jealous. Jealous of what? My prowess. Can someone just explain to me exactly what is going on here? Tess, are you cheating? No. Yes, she is cheating at words with friends. Words with friends? Yeah. I haven't beat her in like six months. She's cheating. I, I don't know how, I don't know why, but the other day she played Quixotic for 126 points. It was the last straw. I packed my bags. I moved out. Well, this is both more petty and less interesting than, frankly, than I had hoped. Tess, is this true? Yeah, it's true. I cheated at Words with Friends. I've been cheating for the last 38 games against Mary. Sorry. I think you have something bigger to say to her. You're right. I'm, I'm really sorry, Mary. I, I just wanted to be better at something than you. You know, you're so good at everything. You're a better cook. You're way better at conversation. You're a better dresser. And I just wanted to be better at one thing. But I get that what I've done is wrong. And I'm really sorry. I, I never meant to hurt you. Well, I'm just glad the truth's finally coming out. But Doc, how will I ever trust her again? Doc? Doctor? Doc? Cats and jammers, 213 points. Ha! What? Oh, uh, I, am, I am sorry. That was extremely unprofessional of me. I apologize. Uh, this session will be uh, pro bono on me, totally. Oh, pro bono. That's a good one. I should see if that fits. Hang on. Oh, look, will you just come home, Mary? I'll be there in like five minutes. All right. Yeah, a round of applause, please, for the sparkly beatniks. Now, you may not think that we can hear your applause. But we can feel your applause. So as you're sitting in the comfort of your own home, on your own couch, with your own snacks, remember to send out some applause for the sparkling beatniks. Well, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, the first of two special guests, and he is a not only a guest in tonight's show, he is also a member of the sparkling beatniks. And he recently uh, acquired a new pet that he'll probably tell you about. Uh, so would everybody at home please give a big hand to our friend Dave Rabino. Hey, Dave. Hey there. How's it going, man? It's good. Nice to see you. It's nice to be here, wherever here is. Um, yeah, Keith, uh, Keith, Keith is, uh, is right. I, I, I did just uh, procure a dog today. Uh, th yeah, there was some excitement in the family. Uh, uh, so we're, we're all, we're all uh, hunkered down together. Now there's a, a fourth 
human, uh, well, not human, but a fourth creature that we're responsible for, um, which means that, uh, you know, we're sort of uh, forced to uh, form this, uh, this, this uh, organic unit, which uh, will function as a, as a cohesive unit, um, which is uh, really a source of comfort in these times. And uh, I wrote the song uh, uh, about a, 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 a creature who didn't uh, have this benefit. Um, this, uh, I wrote this uh, prior to all this nonsense, but it seems weirdly relevant, I guess. I don't know, or at least to the nine comic book nerds listening. Um, thank you, comic book nerd. Um, uh, this song is about uh, the loneliest man in the universe, uh, who is, uh, of course, uh, Galactus, who um, uh, wanders the universe looking to eat planets uh, and was, has been defeated by the Fantastic Four, among others. Uh, so this is a, a, a song about Galactus, which I would like to dedicate to my friend Dylan, who said he would never uh, come to Providence to watch the show but would probably watch tonight. Uh, and I remain in awe of what it takes globally for Dylan to watch me sing a song. So this is for you, Dylan. He's too big to sit in a car. He's too big to sit at the bar. He can't go to the park or out in the town. He's too big to fit in a car. His heart is the size of a lake. The sound that it makes when it breaks is the sound of the moon pulling free of the earth. His heart is the size of a lake. He doesn't have any friends, just a wandering space alien. Fantastic Four man, that's four against one. He doesn't have any friends. His hunger is like a black hole, impossible for him to control. He'll devour your world, he has no choice. His hunger is like a black hole. He's too big to fit in a car. He's too big to sit at the bar. He can't go to the park or out on the town. To fit in a car. He's too big to fit in a car. He's too big to fit in a car. Oh, thank you, captive audience in the dining room. Dave, that was great. Thanks, man. Would you uh, would you do another song for us? Yeah, you bet your ass I would. Good. Um, <laughs> uh, this is a this is a, a song written uh, by the great uh, and uh, unbelievably I mean I I just, like one of the maybe five great humans uh, left on Earth uh, John Prine um, who as many of you know is uh, in the hospital stricken with this uh, god awful disease and uh, just trying to put my energy and all of our energy out into the universe to uh to um uh see that he sees through um and he uh this song is about the flip side of social distancing which is about uh being stuck uh in a house with somebody uh this song's called the other side of town <laughs> Why do you always criticize me? Seems like everything I do just turns out wrong. Why don't you just come on out and despise me? 
I'll pack my bag and baby, I'll be gone. Remember when you used to call me honey? I turn around and call you honey too. You might think it's a joke, but it ain't funny to hurt someone who's so in love with you. A clown puts his makeup on upside down. So he wears a smile even when he wears a frown. You might think I'm here when you put me down. But actually, I'm on the other side of town. My body is in this room with you, just catching hell. But my soul is drinking beer down the road of smell. You might think that I'm listening to your shopping list. But I'm leaning on a jukebox and I'm about halfway there. A clown puts his makeup on upside down. So he wears a smile even when he wears a frown. You might think I'm listening when you put me down. But actually, I'm on the other side of town. I'm sitting on a chair just behind my ears, playing dominoes and drinking some ice cold beer. When you get done talking, I'll come back downstairs and assume the body of the person you presume cares. A clown puts his makeup on upside down, so he wears a smile even when he wears a frown. You might think I'm listening when you put me down, but actually I'm on the other side of town. Actually, I'm on the other side of town. I'm actually drinking beer and shooting pool and watching sports, which is still televised live. It's happening in front of you, and it's a bomb to real life. And that's what I'm watching on the other side of town. Get well soon, John Prine, and thank you, Empire Review. Give it up for Dave Rabineau, everybody at home. Thanks so much, Dave. That was amazing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know you're sitting there on your couch and you're saying, well, great job, Empire Review, adapting your show uh, for this pandemic. But the one thing we really wish we could have in this show is some poetry. So right now, we'd like to present to you, from the Empire of You, some poetry. Hungry. Hungry. I was born with that word on my back. Born with the capacity to attack, to eat, to consume, to be hungry. But no one asked me if I wanted to eat, if what I was eating made me feel complete. I searched the ground for my food. No one asks me my mood or if dinner was good. They expect me to be hungry. Too hungry to care. Too hungry to bear the emotions I'm filled with and I can't fight through this, cause I, I'm not hungry anymore. Your shock ripples through me. I feel it consume me, like I consume pearls, 
of nutrition. They're not fresh from the kitchen. They're cold. I'm conditioned to eat. My ambition to win. Hunger is a game to you. My hunger, I blame on you. My hunger sends pangs through my core and my shame builds to a pressure I cannot contain. Do you feel for me? Do you understand? Do you see how your lens of my being might have caused me to be the very thing I abhor, hungry. I'm not hungry anymore. Well, that was just delightful. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to present to you the game designer sketch. Now, before we begin, I must say that this is highly unusual for me to speak with potential employees, Mr. Um, Ditchy, Ditchy. Yes, uh, Mr. Ditchy, as I was saying, as president of this company, I don't usually meet with people who are interested in working here. That's something that HR normally handles, you see. And as you can imagine, under the current circumstances, I have my hands quite full managing a multi-billion dollar organization for my home office. I don't really have time for Zoom meetings with random would-be employees, but you have contacted our company numerous times and you have been very insistent on meeting with me personally. So let's get to it, shall we, Mr. Dutchie? Uh, it's, uh, it's Ditchie, it's uh, Ron Ditchie, but <laughs> hey, listen, 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 I appreciate that and I know you're a very busy person and I know everybody's getting laid off left and right because this whole you know, pandemic thing, And but look, this is, this is my dream, right? <laughs> and I'm not gonna get a little global uh, pandemic get in the way of my dream, you know? So listen, listen, I have been working for several years in the workshop uh, garage behind my house uh, on designing games. And I have come up with some real winners. You, look, I'm gonna give you an exclusive. You are not gonna regret this. That's so. All right, well, uh, why don't you show me some of these real winners you've developed? Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't believe this, Planker Brothers, you're the biggest game company in the world. Ah, here we go. Yeah. This first one is called Scrim Scram, huh? It's a, uh, well, it's like shoots and ladders, except it's with waters and, water and strings. Uh, okay, okay, Mr. I, I, I don't think that's no, Oh, you don't really like, okay, no problem. I got another, I got another one. This one right here. This is Pucka Sauce, Pucka Sauce. It's a, uh, well, it's like risk, except it takes place in a restaurant. Get it? Nope. No. Okay, fine. Okay, quick. Oh. <laughs> you want some little more fun, little more action? Okay, this one. Bungle Town. It's tiddlywinks, but with guns. Oh, I. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> All right. fine. Wait. Look, you are gonna love this. Is my this is my most original one. This is Gin Chunks. It's uh, like Rock'em Sock'em Robots, except with live mice. Mr. Ditchy, just. Just stop right there. <laughs> I, I appreciate that you're very passionate about your, your you know, venture into game design and you obviously spent significant time on these ideas, but these are all just games that exist to which you've just added confusing and dangerous variables and then just changed the name. So if you excuse me, I have other meetings I need to get to. You haven't even let me tell you about the best one yet. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, fine. Look. Look. I, I, I mailed you my most incredible gaming invention. It's in a package right at your desk. Just pick it right up there. Oh, you are going to love this. I can't believe it. I call this one the Baffle Box. What is, what is yeah, this? Yeah, give it a try. What, what is this? It, it's just yeah, spin it. Try it right. Just, I'm spinning it, but what's the point of spinning it? It's all the same. You just turn the side and it's all oh, the no, same. No you're, no, you're gonna solve it. And if you have any problem, you just contact me. I'll help you figure it out. How do you know when you solve it? How is it possible to know? Oh, you'll know. You'll know. You'll know. <sighs> you know what, Mr. Ditchy? Yeah. 
I, I think I do have a job for you here at <gasps> Planker Brothers. <gasps> you mean it? Really? Oh. Yes, yes, Mr. Ditchie, I do. I, uh, you know, just contact uh, Carol in HR. I know you know her contact because you have contacted her many times, and uh, <laughs> she will get you all set up. Oh, holy smokes. Oh, my goodness. You won't mean by day, I tell you. <laughs> so, look, what, what's my title going to be? Like a, like a chief designer or head of uh, R&D or something like that? Mr. Ditchie, even better. Uh, you'll be what we in the business call a vroom broom. A vroom broom? What's that? Well, it's like a custodian, but you also park cars. All right, I'll be ending this call now, Mr. Ditchie. Goodbye. But, but I, 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 I... Goodbye. Son of a bitch. I solved it. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to the sparkling beatniks. And uh, I just want to call your attention right here to uh, this sign, which is uh, the Venmo handle, at Keith Munzler, and you can make uh, a donation to the Empire of You uh, if you'd like to do that. We super appreciate it. Right now, though, uh, we have another guest. We're super lucky uh, tonight. We have... Uh, two guests for you guys and uh our second guest has, sh has shared the stage with us many many times we're excited that he's here tonight so put your hands for together for mr chris monty hey chris how's it going Keith? so uh is there still gonna be pizza after the show there is but you we, we all are ordering it separately so you just gotta <laughs> it's gonna be like a 700 hundred dollar thing <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right, the song I have tonight is called uh, We're Gonna Have a Pandemic Baby. Uh, just to clarify, it's We're Gonna Have a Pandemic, comma, Baby. And it goes like this. Awesome, Chris. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being Fun. here. Come back at the end and take a bow, okay? Will do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, right now we want to keep uh, the funny coming at you. And though I confess uh, that it has been really hard to uh, get a comic, a stand-up comic, to do uh, this particular version of the show, we did manage to get one, and we'd like you to give him a big round of applause. He's uh, He's a, he's a bit of a, a specific comic, as you'll see. So put your hands together and welcome 
Rodney Pikafield. Oh, I tell you, I sit down to use the computer. I still got no respect. How you doing, folks? I'm Rodney Pikafield. Oh, boy. That's a rough one out there. You know, people think being a Pokemon, it's all fun and games, you know? But that ain't what it is, you know? Uh, a guy like me, I've been busting my electric bolt-shaped tail since 96, and I, I still got no respect at all. As try as I'm Magnemite, I get no respect, you know? Oh, I tell you, the only Gyarados I ever caught is a Gyarados of reality. Oh. I just can't keep up with them no more, you know? The kids of this generation, I'm, I'm getting too old for them, you know? Ugh, I get no respect compared to them. I'm just a slow poke, you know? Uh, they tell me I'm just too drowsy. Ugh, no respect at all. Uh, uh, with the ladies, oh, you better forget it. I asked Nurse Joy if she wants to go on for a night with me. She said, hey, sorry, pal. You ain't got a chancey with me. And I, I, I gave up on that. I tried officer, uh, asking Officer Jenny. She said, hey, no chance, buddy. You're too oddish. Oh, I'm getting old, too. I'm going to accept it. I'm getting old. Uh, I wake up every night. I'm coughing and wheezing and lying in a puddle of my own muck. Oh, just ain't right. I wasn't no much better when I was a kid. I was an ugly kid, too. Only difference between me and a Mr. Mime is people wanted me behind a visible wall. Uh, no respect at all. I tried to meet some grass types. I walked through poison ivy, broke out in bulbous sores. I tried to meet some fire types. They all took off in a rapid dash. Tried to see what kind of Pokemon they got at Team Rocket's lair. Said I couldn't get in. I said, hey, screw you. I said, hey, screw you too. They said, ditto, pal. Oh, it's what's happening to me, you know? It just ain't right, you know? It just ain't right, you know? All right. Thanks for coming out. You all been a great crowd. Be sure to catch me in my brand new movie, Defective Pikachu. Thank you so much. All right, that was uh, Rodney Peakfield with that incredibly specific demographic sliver. Okay. Oh, I think I unplugged my speaker, but... Hang on a second, you guys. Yep. Okay. Everything's fine. It's going to come right back on in a second. Um, so uh, I wrote a song for you guys, and there it is. I wrote a song for you guys, and I'm going to sing it for you right now. Tell you this, I ain't doing no better at getting through my list. The stuff I gotta do and things I missed, that's just the way it is. Got a broken stove and a big stack of books. I should clean the car, I should learn to cook. But all I can think about is the nap I took. That's just the way it is. Maybe I'm lazy, but that's just fine. Cause I like living even if I'm just killing time. Friends populating my feed, helping each other and doing good deeds. Well, scrolling through that, I think I need a nap, another nap. Maybe I'm lazy, well, that's just fine. Cause I like living, even if I'm just. 
I can feel that applause. I can feel it coming at me. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a sketch called Zoom Tutor. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Hey. Hi. Oh. Hi. Hello. Oh, good. Hello. Good. Everybody on? Hi, everyone. Hey. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. No, yeah. Okay, great. Oh, good. Good, good. Can you good. see me? Um, no. I hear you. Oh, I hear I you. Oh, hold on. You know what? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, you might not be able to see me. There's something wrong with my video. It's something about the host. Okay. Uh, oh. But I can see you. Uh, oh, I can see you. There's Gina and Rick and Tracy. Oh, good. There you are. Uh, so I wanted to thank you all again for taking measures to socially distance yourself during these trying times. Uh, stay safe out there and stay home. Oh, there I am. Oh, good. Oh. Yeah. Great. Now, with that being said, we do need to check in. I think that now is the time for Betaform Corp to proactively syndicate our supply chains to get more product to strategic theme areas across the country. Our numbers have shown that the Avocabro, our avocado safety slicer, just isn't selling during this pandemic. So let's put our heads together. Let's see if we can right this ship. Innovative concept, Linda. Yeah. yeah. Like yes, yeah, bravo. Uh, Thank you. Before we report on our individual progress, I'd like to introduce you to my husband's nephew, Chaz. He was deemed unessential down at GameStop, and he will be working with us as a temp. He showed up on our doorstep, and now we're all quarantined together for some reason. Uh, I know we're not all familiar with this interface, so he is going to help us by facilitating the workflow. Some of you might recognize Chaz from the YouTube, and uh, he's a native speaker to video conferencing. So take it away, Chaz. Wait, Chaz. Where the, yo, yo, what's up, Aunt Linda? Hello? Hello? Hey, Aunt Linda, am I coming through for you? Uh, we can hear you, Chaz. Yes. Well, what, 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 all right, what the hell? Why does my freaking video work? Whatever, it's lame. Starting and stopped, it's lame. Whatever. Stop beta form pork fam. That's right. We family now. I'm your on the cob, bro. You'll probably know me as at Greener Finger Law, best known for the squad takedown of Cheeseburger 69 at the Battle Royale. Gamers, smash that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hashtag stay at home. Hashtag gamers don't die. Hashtag we respond. Hashtag y'all know me, Zoom. Huh. Oh, jeez. That was very that nice. Really, that's that's necessary. Hashtag hi. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. To, to hashtag. About. Hey, yo, Tracy up in this. Hashtag Tracy, where you at? Y'all, oh, Tracy, this is super laggy. I think you've got to up your ping, girl. Um, no, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? All right, Tracy, what's the hash of those Q1 numbers? Uh, okay, so I can report um 3% growth in sales in fiscal year 19 with international sales accounting for about 41% of all the year's re revenue. Um, heading into the end of this quarter, if we completely embrace all platforms that drive front-end customer service, we should make it through this pandemic. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, so what you're saying is you think the, think the whole squad's gonna respawn in Q2? Uh, 
What does that even mean? Response? Can we just reconsider what Tracy was saying about the numbers and formulate a market-driven response? I don't understand why we're, you know, speaking in these, these weird terms. Chaz. Chaz. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, 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 yo, Joe, how, how are we doing on the marketing strategy for V3, the avocado, bro? Your adaptive change is going to guac our world? V3, huh? Oh, you beat uh, the new version of the product. That, yeah, okay. Yeah, the noob version of the product, up top, yeah. I don't get it. Okay, so, uh, well, we've been working on distinctively fabricating cross-platform changes that uniquely adapt to our target audience's mind share, right? We've also aggregated the safety versions of the Avocabro to be future-proof. We're actively on brand, and Robin can uh, fill us in on the uh, product schema. Thanks, Joe. Um, through all of our virtual focus groups, we found that meta services offer effective methodologies across the paradigm. Also, we're changing the color of the packaging from blue to green. So, Ooh, wow. Yeah. I like green. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I knew they'd like it, Robin. Yo, word, Robin and Joe, word. Those plans are tight shit. That reminds me of the time me and the squad were dropping a Tilted Towers, R.I.P., and we found some legendaries just started sniping squads. Basically, we clapped them. I, I, I'm sorry, Linda. Please take no offense, Chaz. I'm not understanding you. Um, could we just please circle back to what Linda was saying about getting more product to strategic theme areas? Yeah. That, that seems like a good idea. Yeah, yeah, Linda, now seems like the time to radically engineer quality functionalities. And dramatically benchmark e-services. Oh, yes. No, that's what I'm talking about. Betaform Corp can't afford to go AFK and get teabagged by some bot. Jeez, Rick, Gina, Robin, don't rage quit on me. Yeah, what I think Chaz is trying to say is that differentiating our value-driven strategies will be a transformational change. Exactly, Aunt Linda. Thank you. And also, thank you for taking me in, because something I didn't clarify yet is that I was not, when I say it was deemed unessential from GameStop, I mean I was fired in January. Listen up, Beta Form Corp team. We got to quit rides and all this techie horse armor season pass bull. We don't want to get pwned by a competition at a time like this. It's simple. The avocado bro needs to avocado grow across all platforms. Get good. Uh, okay, so, so Chaz, uh, uh, if I was going to unpack that, uh, what you're trying to say is that with small goal-oriented metrics, Betaform Corp will be able to leverage quality vectors to increase profit margins? And to drill down a little further, what we really need to be targeting is the low-hanging fruit, perhaps in the Gen Z demographic. Am I getting that? Yes, gamers. Yes. Now we're strafing in the right direction. No odd job. And just to clarify, we should uh, holistically reconceptualize interactive process improvement and uh, move more product by using really shitty avocado pun <laughs> for yep. all our future applications? Like, that's what you're saying? That's, that's right, Joe. Afraid. You walk this. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, Chaz, um, that's a hardcore strategy, right? Get it? Hardcore strategy, because, nope. you know. No, I got it. Okay. <laughs> Bravocado, Chaz and team. <laughs> Oh, so let's check check back next week and see if we're really rocking and rolling with these synergies. Thank you for joining me. Thanks. All right, thanks for joining thanks, us. Thanks. Nice to Bye. meet you, Chad. Yeah. Ring that bell. Welcome. Yeah, good to guac to see ya. Guac. Well, thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for putting up uh, with all of those avocado puns and technical, technical difficulties. Uh, we're going to figure them all out because uh, we're going to be here again next month doing the Empire. Hey, Keith, I got the kids down finally. What? Uh, they're asleep. So I got that thing I was going to do now. I got the thing I was going to do. All right? Do the sewer at the end of the show, buddy. It's Look, it's Stapley. Okay. Hey, everybody. I'm a sentient stapler. Yeah. I I'm here to talk. We're out of time. Yeah. We're out of time. And, and staples. I'm sorry. Stu, Stu, we're, we're out of time. And to be honest, you probably missed it, but we already did a puppet piece. Yeah. Um, I think sorry. It was a puppet piece. Yeah. Ayla did a. I'm sorry, man. Oh,
It went really well, though. Oh, so fuck. maybe <laughs> talk to her about. It's cool. Um, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you uh, for uh, joining us tonight. We have one more thing that we want to do for you guys. You know, we were thinking that we would like to send out to you um, a song of hope. But uh, as anybody who's been uh, doing any Zooming uh, lately, you know that there's just too much lag uh, for us to all sing together. So we put something very special together for you and we uh, retrofitted a song from our show, Benny's the Musical. And uh, we hope that you like it. And here it is. <laughs> Alone in our cars, like losing a friend. So, so close, close, but so far. To learn to weather the storm. Oh, oh you, you learn, learn to weather, weather the storm. I think it's cold, I think it's cold. But I'll be damned if I go shop at the mall. Stay safe and steer clear of their siren call. We know how to weather the storm. So swift and so silent, it forced us apart. So we'll ride this one out for we're joined at the heart. And we will weather the storm. Oh, we will weather the storm. Like Captain Ahab on his quest for the whale. For Blackbeard the pirate, for glory he sailed. We dash on our hopes, but we'll never fail. Cause we're tougher than screws. We're tougher than nails. And we'll drink coffee milk like it's tangled of hell. We will weather the storm. Oh, we will weather the storm. Oh, we will weather the for our show, ladies and gentlemen. We want to give big shout out to the Sparkling Beatnix. Give it up for Ayla Alquist. Brian Elliott. Jimmy Sorrell. Kate Sales. Kelly Sai. Rachel Winslow. Austin Croft, Stuart Wilson, yeah. and our very special guest beatniks, Jeannie Dunlavey and Russell Kellogg. And to our stage manager turned broadcast administrator, Nikki Mariani Wilson. And our very special guests, Dave Rabideau and Chris Monty. And I would like to give a special shout out to my technical coordinator, Katie. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, have a song for you and I'm gonna sing it right now. Shut down, log off, we're finished with the show. Hulu, Netflix, and maybe HBO Go. Just stay at home, our friends and fam. And please just wash your hands, we've had some fun. Now we're done, it's time to go. Log off. Thanks for coming, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna stick around for a few minutes if you wanna say hi. And we will see you right here again next month with more content.
Okay, everybody order your pizza now. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Everybody Thanks, what? everyone. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Oh. <laughs> I'm officially protecting our shoes. Dog butt. Dog butt. Yeah. Dog butt. Dog butt. Dog butt. Dog butt. Dog butt. Oh, oh, I love you. He's the just, he's the I love you, Dewey. <laughs> hey, Dewey. He loves you. Happy. I just ate a donut, so. Oh yeah, I want a donut for dessert. Oh, throw one over. I'm done. <laughs> Take a donut. I'm having the other half. Oh wait, no, you. Were, oh, I'm gonna have a half a. Go, or go, one. Hold on, yes. <laughs> How good was a highlight? That's a great point. So you didn't let him comment during the show. Oh, I have a cat. <laughs> Hello, baby. Meow. Freaked out and ran into the basement. Muddy. Ooh, good question. I'm gonna put the chairs away. That is a good question. Uh, not me. I think we should make the audience do it like usual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys put the chairs away. <laughs> if we're all ordering pizza, none of us are free to clean up the chairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really yeah, I'm still here. Pizza. Vlogging. 